you're known for putting a lot of time and effort into understanding the characters that you're playing and the worlds that they inhabit as well. And I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about that first film, about the professional, and working with Luc Besson at that point, because you were quite literally a young student at that point. You were 11 years old when you started making that movie. And, and it must have been a risk in many ways, I think, you know, for Luc Besson to, um, to find uh, someone who could ca almost carry the movie. I mean, your, your uh, character is very central to the film. It's really the two of you at the center of it. But also for you and for your family to make a movie um, as a child with all of the risks that that entails for, for child actors. Um, and if you can kind of cast your mind back to when you and your parents were making those decisions, what kind of risks were you thinking about? What was that like? Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a big conversation in our household before they allowed me to, to do it. They were definitely, my, my parents are not related to the film industry at all, and they were very much like, child actors become drug addict prisoners, <laughs> you know, like this is not the road we want you to take. Um, and I really, really fought hard for it and cried and, you know, begged and pleaded. And, um, and it's also a really big deal for our family because obviously my mom came with me, my dad had to work in New York, and so it also separated the family for a long time, which, you know, I wasn't part of that conversation, but I'm sure I'm sure my parents were. So, um, yeah, it was a really big gift that they gave me to trust me like that. And they, they protected me really well so that I was never, never subjected to any kind of weirdness that I've mm -hmm. heard, you know, uh, colleagues, peers of mine who were child actors saying that they had seen drugs or that had, they had, like, weird passes made at them. I never had anything like that because my parents were, like, hovering. <laughs> On it. Um, uh, but then it, they also allowed me this great freedom, which was so kind um, to to go do what I loved. So, although your mother um, is an artist and and has uh, and paints, as I, I understand, um, you didn't grow up in a stage family or an entertainment business family. How did you know when that role came up that you wanted it so badly? Um, yeah, well, actually, my mom, like the bane of her existence, is that it, like someone wrote on my Wikipedia page that she was like my manager and she's like, I'm not a momager. Like I never was. I never would take anything from you. Like she was so supportive, but I mean, they really, both my parents are supportive, but not like taking a percentage or anything. <laughs> um, and um, I, I was just always really into performing when I was little. I loved dancing and singing and putting on shows for the family. And because I lived on Long Island, um, a lot of kids on Long Island would do like commercials and audition for TV mm. shows and stuff and you know they'd put it into like a college fund or whatever mm. whatever money they need so I knew people around me had like agents and that sort of thing so I begged my parents to if they would let me have an agent and then go on auditions and they were nice enough to allow me and uh, I think it was sort of chance that the first thing I got happened to be like a good director mm -hmm. and, a, and a good part because you know if I had gotten like a Cheerios commercial first I'd be like <laughs> so happy you know right. it wasn't it wasn't like I was choosing a career path when I was that age. Mm -hmm. We have a clip from The Professional uh, that I want to show this is where Matilda your character tells Leon that she wants to be a cleaner you know what a cleaner means and uh, let's have a look at that clip from The Professional. Read it. You don't know how to read. I'm learning, but I had a lot of work lately, so I'm a little behind. What did it say? I've decided what to do with my life. I want to be a cleaner. I want to be a cleaner. Here. Take it. It's a goodbye gift. Go clean. But not with me. I work alone, understand, alone. Bonnie and Clyde didn't work alone. Thelma and Louise didn't work alone. And they were the best. Matilda, why are you doing this to me? I've been nothing but nice to you. I even saved your life yesterday, right outside the door. Right. So now you're responsible for it. If you saved my life, you must have saved it for a good reason. If you throw me out now, it's like you never opened your door. Like you let me die right there in front of it. But you did open it. So? Matilda. Don't help me, I'll die tonight. 
I can feel it. And I don't want to die tonight. Matilda, you're just a little girl, so I'll take it badly, but I don't think you could do it. I'm sorry. Badass. I don't think I've seen that since I was that age. Really? It's really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not one of those actors that watches your past work? No. Oh, no. Okay, no Norma Desmond. <laughs> um, when you do look at it now, and it is so many years ago, wh what do you see yourself doing on screen there? Oh my God, everything wrong. But <laughs> really? I got to have some like forgiveness for my 11 year old self, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> um, and you were working with Luc Besson. Um, and, you know, he's, of course, had a long career in a, d a lot of different kinds of films, fantasy uh, action in some cases. Um, interestingly, Interestingly to me, you uh, worked with Scarlett Johansson on The Other Boleyn Girl, and of course she worked with him recently on Lucy, and uh, two real kick-ass heroines. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, he's, he's very good at giving women good, tough, tough parts, I mm -hmm. think. Um, so you're looking at this uh, as a, a screenplay or as a project uh, that's presented to you, and, and are, are you aware of those kinds of things, that this is a, a cool girl that I want to play, or what was it that drew you to it? Yeah, I was really, I was really moved by the script. I mean, I was 11, so everything, and I was like a very dramatic child, so I was like, oh my God, she loves him. And you know, the normal <laughs> sort of uh -huh. romantic preteen. Um, Loved it, but also, like I said, I was really, really excited to like get a movie part. So, mm -hmm. I, I think that was. I, I don't think I would have been like not interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 um, there's something that I see in in this scene here, and that I also saw in Beautiful Girls, where there's a kind of a like a grounded intensity to the characters that you're portraying on sc screen that sometimes disarms the people that you're with in the scene. Uh, there's a great scene uh, where one of the first times you meet Tim Hutton in Beautiful Girls and um, you're just standing outside uh, you know, uh, in your two yards talking to each other and you know, he's a much older man and you're at that point, what, your character's what, like 13 or something? Yeah. Um, but he's disarmed by you. You can tell that he's the weaker person in that scene and here too, your character has a kind of a strength and a stillness that kind of unsettles much older men. What's that about? Well, <laughs> we could talk about this all night, but I think it's a, a trope of cinema, of uh -huh. course. It's cinema, not you. Yeah, to uh, have you know a young girl, very, very young girl, um, disarm a, a much older man, be so mature and intelligent and wise beyond her years, but mm. yet nubile. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not something that's particularly something I think is a, a good trend. And Correct. obviously it's like screenwriters writing like some fantasy of like a young girl who's like intellectually an equal, but like, right. you know. A young girl. A young girl. <laughs> right. 